everyone. Today I want to get a little bit kind of meta and talk a little bit about YouTube and YouTube channels in general. One of the big things I always get asked by people is what advice would I give to people wanting to start their own channels? Should I start my own channel? How did you start your own channel? That kind of stuff. Very recently I've been kind of like helping out a lot of my friends who are musicians with sort of setting up their YouTube channels and things like that and giving them some advice and helping them out a little bit. So I figured it would be a good opportunity to kind of make a video on it as well. And I want to give a few tips for things that I found helpful in kind of creating and growing my YouTube channel to like, you know, the point where it is now with like a hundred thousand subscribers. Before I did YouTube I worked in digital marketing so I guess it helped to have that kind of background and that was kind of one of the reasons I started YouTube because I was seeing how much money I was making for these companies that I was working for and I was like, why not just make that money for myself and sort of turn me into the brand, if that makes sense. So that's that's kind of what I did and I just really enjoy this and I love making content and entertaining people which is why I keep doing it and keep loving it and why I have so much fun with this job. Um, so today I've got five tips for you which aren't necessarily the most technical tips, they're more kind of general tips that are going to be good for you no matter what kind of channel you have or want to have and it's just little bits of advice that I kind of wish someone had told me a little bit earlier on in my YouTube journey, if that makes sense. My first bit of advice might sound really, really simple, but it's to create the kind of content that you want to watch. This was kind of where I went a little bit wrong starting my channel, and I know this is gonna sound really stupid, but I was making the kind of content that I thought other people wanted to see, and it's very, very hard to put yourself in other people's shoes and kind of think, well, what do they want to see? When things really started to pick up for me and when I started getting views on my videos was when I started making the kind of videos that I wanted to watch myself but couldn't already find on YouTube. And it was around the time of like the UK general election and I was just looking for a young woman my age talking about the election, just saying what her views were and you know, who she was voting for, why she was voting that way. Um, and I was looking for a video like that and I really, really struggled to find it. So I was like, you know what? Why not make the video myself? And I did. For me, there weren't, you know, 18 months ago, there weren't a lot of women, or at least English women on YouTube talking about science and atheism and politics. So I decided to just fill that void because it's what I wanted to see. That's why I think there's a lot of variation in my channel as well because I just make the videos on whatever I'm interested in at the time and it seems to work out. And I think this is a kind of little thing that is going to be useful for everyone because you guys already watch a lot of YouTube, obviously, you're here watching this now. But you already watch a lot of YouTube so you already are your target audience if that makes sense. You just need to figure out what you want to see and then make it for yourself. Of course you have to be careful not to, I guess, make your content too self-absorbed or self-obsessed or whatever. There's a fine line between making content for yourself and making the kind of content you want to see. As an example of kind of like good versus bad, a, a great thing would be like, you're a musician and you want to start making um, tutorials about, you know, how to play an instrument, how to sing, how to do this, how to book gigs, how to whatever. As a musician, you already have an idea of what kind of videos you would want to be watching as a musician from other musicians, if, if that makes sense. And so you might get an idea of what kind of videos to make by thinking, okay, well, when I was starting out in my career, what kind of questions were, was I asking? What kind of information did I want to know? And then you go ahead and make videos on that kind of stuff yourself. On the other hand, if you're, say, a story time channel, you know, people might not care about stories about your mum's boyfriend's cousin's sister's dog's girlfriend. No one's going to care about that outside the people in your life who already know about them. They're, they're not going to care about your local gossip and your stories and stuff like that. You still need to think about adding value to the viewer and think about what is the reason behind them watching. They're not going to care about some local gossip in your village, but if you're an entertaining storyteller who is going to tell a story that's going to make them laugh or shock them or scare them or teach them something at the end of it, then maybe they will care about it. I guess what I'm trying to say in summary is make the kind of content that you would want to watch but still make sure you're providing value for your viewer. And by value, I mean anything from you're entertaining them, you're teaching them something, you're making them laugh, you're giving them something. Make sure there's a point to your video. Make sure you know what your viewer's gonna be getting out of it by watching it. If the video is purely for yourself and no one's gonna get anything out of watching it, 
then no one is gonna watch it. My second bit of advice is a little bit more practical and less kind of wishy-washy vague and it's about finding an upload schedule that works for you and making it consistent. So some people will start a channel and they'll upload three videos in a week and then nothing for four months and be like, why aren't I getting views? Why aren't people subscribing? And it's because there's no consistency there. You need to be consistently putting out output. People need to know that if they subscribe, they're gonna be consistently getting new content and that they can rely on you and trust you to actually put out this content. Getting a viewer to subscribe is about building a relationship with them. I would never just ask someone to subscribe for the sake of it. In return, I wanna try and give them quality content. I wanna try and give them regular content. It's a two-way thing, you know? They're giving me their time, they're giving me their space on their YouTube feed and in return I want to try and give them something quality and entertaining and educational in return. You can't just ask for subscriptions without giving a hell of a lot back. Some people say that the more you upload the faster you'll grow and to some extent this is true but you still need to make sure that you're putting out quality content. So it's better to put out one high quality, well researched, well scripted or thought out, well edited video a week than it is to put out seven mediocre rushed videos. A video a week is maybe a good thing to aim for for some channels when you're starting out, but obviously not every channel can do this. So maybe just one a month could be something that you aim for if your videos are bigger and take longer to produce and film and so on. So for example, there's a channel I really like that I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce, but it's these guys. It's a guy who does like old painting restoration and stuff like that. And his videos aren't the most regular, but they are at least consistent with their uploads. You always know that he is going to be putting out new content and his videos are brilliant. The quality is fantastic. They're beautifully shot. They're well narrated. They're interesting and they're pretty unique. I've not found anything else like it on YouTube and they're definitely, definitely worth subscribing to. So that's an example of a channel that doesn't upload every day, but when they do, it's consistent quality uploads. So it's about figuring out what works best for you and sticking to it and not getting disheartened if you don't see immediate growth. My third bit of advice is for when you're first starting out and I'd say, don't worry about getting things like all the best kit and being the best at everything straight away. It's better to do something and get better than to wait until you're best before you do it. Does that make sense? That might have been a bit rambly. My point is, a lot of people get disheartened or they put off doing things because they're like, oh, I want to wait till I get a better camera. I want to wait till I get a better microphone. I want to wait until I have lighting. I want to wait until I have such and such an editing program. I want to wait until I can do this, until I can do this. And honestly, it's just making excuse and excuses and putting things off. It's, um, uh, this is where like what I'm about to say gets a little bit more wishy-washy because, you know, in the last point I was talking about don't put out mediocre videos, put out the best quality. But it's not necessarily about putting out the best quality videos compared to everyone else. It's about putting out the best quality videos you can with what you currently have. So even if you've got, you know, a low quality camera and a not so great microphone, you can still try and make the audio a little bit better using free programs like Audacity. You can still work on making sure the content is there, that it's well researched, well thought out, well scripted maybe, or you can work on editing it so it's really, really tight, really, really all relevant and good stuff. You can make sure you're filming at the right time of day. So even if you don't have like actual lighting like this, you're filming in front of a bright window, um, you know, instead of by a tiny lamp in your bedroom at midnight, that sort of stuff. You don't need the best kit to still produce the best possible work you can. And sometimes it's better to just do things and learn as you go and grow as you grow you know, than waiting and putting things off. And I think that's the best bit of advice I could give. When I started out YouTube, I was absolutely useless and I had no idea about anything to do with audio stuff. I wasn't very confident in front of the camera and I still stumble over my words a lot and I still get nervous, but I'm a lot, lot better than I was a year and a half ago and that's the important thing. I am growing and I can see myself learning and getting better and you guys will too. You just need to put in that work and make a start and you will get there. You will become amazing if you want to. Uh, the fourth tip is to get used to dealing with criticism and that might sound a little bit harsh. Um, I don't mean like, oh, you know, you, you're all terrible, get over it. I, I don't mean that at all. What I mean is, especially on the internet and especially when people can be anonymous, there will always be people who will criticize you and sometimes that criticism is deserved and you need to understand when to take that criticism and when to listen to it and when to learn from it. But you also need to understand that sometimes there are people out there who are just doing it because they want a reaction, they want to try and hurt you. 
and you have to learn to distinguish between those bits of criticism. You won't get everything right straight away and people will call you out for that and that is absolutely fine, that is welcome. That kind of criticism helps you grow and helps you learn and helps you become a better content creator. But then there are people out there who just want to be like, like for me, I get a lot of people saying like, oh, fix your teeth. And I'm like, there's nothing wrong with my teeth. They're a bit wonky. And those comments did upset me at first and now they don't bother me because, you know, my teeth have no impact on the content I'm putting out. And if people want to be bothered by my teeth, that's their problem, not mine. There's the people who just want to be nasty and get a reaction. And again, you can't let them bother you. They're always going to be there and you have to kind of get used to it you just have to teach yourself not to let it affect you. So it's about identifying the comments that help you and the ones that don't and ignoring the ones that don't. If a person said to me, oh, you might be better if you got such and such a microphone or hey, have you tried doing this audio editing technique? Or hey, I noticed that this bit you missed some parts that you could have edited out. That's the kind of amazing stuff that helps me grow as a creator and helps my videos get better and increases my quality of content. But the people who just name call and call me ugly or stupid or whatever, that doesn't help anyone. So it's not worth getting emotional about. And it's very, very difficult to learn to not let that stuff bother you. And when I'm having a few sad days or I'm in a bad place emotionally from other things, those comments can affect me. So another part of learning um, to deal with those comments is to know when I'm kind of emotionally healthy enough to look at them and when I'm not and making sure I don't put myself in situations where I know I'm going to get upset for honestly no reason. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. I might be a bit rambly. And finally, my last little bit of advice is to simply enjoy what you do and keep enjoying it and only keep doing this as long as you're enjoying it. I know it sounds silly, but sometimes I think people get um, disheartened by, you know, if they don't see their subscribers or views go up or if they're not making money from it. It, it can be really, really disheartening. And that's why I think you really have to enjoy what you do. Y you have to get joy out of the little things like researching a video and coming up with ideas and filming and editing. And, you know, I, I love that kind of stuff. And I would do this for fun, even if I wasn't making money. I mean, I wouldn't be able to do it as regularly because I'd have a full-time job as well. But the point is I love what I do by making sure I make videos about the topics that I love and that I'm passionate about and interested in. It means that I make better content. If I was purely making videos that were suggested by other people or I was trying to copy other creators or I was trying to, um, I, I don't know, like follow trends religiously, I probably wouldn't enjoy it as much. But the fact that I have this freedom to make videos about, you know, whatever interests me that week. You know, the other week I made a video about octopuses because I was obsessed with them. Other times I, I make videos about books that I like or makeup that I like or just silly things, you know. There are certain videos that always get views, like my atheism ones and my like book review ones and Ken Ham videos and stuff like that, but I don't always enjoy making them. So by sometimes putting those projects to the side and concentrating on one that I'm really passionate about and really enjoy, it means that overall my content is better. I'm more passionate about it, I enjoy it more. And I think that passes on to you guys as well. I think you can tell when I really enjoy something and when I'm passionate about something and when I love something. And it does make for a better, more entertaining video. And so that's my final bit of advice. Make sure you love what you're doing because that will make everything better in the long run. It makes your quality of videos better. It makes the viewers enjoy the videos more. It makes the whole process more enjoyable and it'll mean you want to do it for longer and it gets you through those rough patches as well. So there you go. They're, they're just kind of like five slightly vague bits of advice that I have for people who want to start a YouTube channel or who are looking to grow a small YouTube channel. Um, I really, really hope that did help some people. I know I didn't go too much into like the technical stuff, like, you know, tagging videos and good titles and stuff like that. Um, that's, you, you know, that's stuff I can talk about if you guys are interested in it. I gave a kind of like talk the other day to some of my music or musician friends um, about this kind of stuff for YouTube and there's actually a really interesting document that I put together on it which, you know what, I'm gonna upload that to Patreon if any of my Patreons want to check it out. There's some kind of YouTube marketing information on there. Um, I'll go upload that now for you guys if you're interested. I'm rambling. I probably ramble quite a lot in this video but I really hope it's helped. 
some of you guys. Stuff in my personal life has been a little bit crazy recently, which is why I've not been making as many videos. I will update you guys soon if it's stuff that you're interested in, but as of May, things are gonna settle down and get more steady and things are gonna be okay again and everything's gonna be good. So don't worry about that kind of stuff. Um, I've also got some stuff up in the air because I'm gonna be speaking at Faithless Forum in Texas in April, I think the end of April. So, you know, if you're coming to that as well, drop me a message. It would be really, really great to meet some of you there and see you all there and whatever. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking now. I wanted this to be a short video. Thank you for watching today. You guys are amazing and I appreciate you so much. And I'll see you all again soon. Thank you so much to everyone supporting me on Patreon this month, including Gambit and a Chauffeur, Day Sean, Liv's Pantyhose Addiction, Data Jack, Christian Berg, Rachel B. Royer, Jaden Shepard, Robert Corte, Peter Carrack, Sir Michael Moore, Christina the Atheist, Christian Opitz, Sage Floriel, Greg Glad, and Lauren Hart. You're all amazing. <laughs>